let you go without asking you this question. Yes, sir. It's uh, high school basketball starts in about three weeks. Yes. What's your What's your take on Northwood and what? Now that they're two A uh, conference uh, school, what What's your take on Northwood? Their strengths, their their weaknesses, or how far do you think they're going to go you this know, year? Great, great question. Uh, I actually asked. Uh, uh, Coach Vernon, uh, when we uh, saw him today, uh, about the prospects for Northwood. Uh, obviously, we have one of the best players in the country. And uh, if you all haven't had a chance to, you need to come out and watch Northwood. If you have had a chance to see him come play, because Drake May is a uh, – Drake Powell, I'm sorry. Let's get our sports yeah. right here. It's Drake, basketball. It's Drake Powell is a special, special player. And I remember watching him. <clears throat> Cameron asked me to come see him as a freshman. And – you could tell that he had the bones, the structure, and he had some talent, but he had to work at it. I'm amazed at how much work he has put in, and he is a special player, one that we're probably going to be watching on TV for a long time. So that's really neat. But as far as the team, how will the team do? Uh, there are three or four other schools out there in that 2A classification that might give them some problems. But as we know, on any given night, uh, you can get hot or have the right strategy or things happen, fall in place. You can beat anybody on a given night. Well, let's talk about the team a little bit more. Again, you mentioned seeing Drake play when he was a freshman. He's got several folks that have come along with him. You've got Mr. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Hobbs' kid. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, you, you've also got, you also have Fred, who's been there for a while. And those guys actually did get to the championship game their freshman year. Yeah. Uh, and they made it to the championship game yep. last year. So, as a team, what do you see as as being their strengths? Well, I think the big thing is that they're athletic. Uh, and they're unselfish. And uh, those two things will allow you to have a great season. Uh, they're losing a little bit of height, but I think that the athleticism and those players playing together and being unselfish, uh, and, and I'm amazed at how uh, uh, unselfish Drake is for as high a ranked player as he is. He is in tr in incredibly unselfish. So uh, that entire team has the potential to go a long way. They're going to have to uh, catch a few breaks, but uh, I think they can do it. Okay, you use the term unselfish. That may mean a lot of things to a lot of people. And, and again, that term sometimes gets tossed around loosely. When you say unselfish, what do you mean? What I mean is we see this a lot on TV. We see this a lot in, uh, in the ACC. Uh, you have uh, players that have a shot, and let's call it a 15-foot shot, and they can make that shot. Uh, but there's another player over here that has a five-foot five foot shot. It's more open, uh, closer. And, and they're willing to make that uh, that extra pass. Um, I see a lot of basketball now, and I think it's the, the kind of the the after effect of AAU. Uh, the players will go ahead and take that 20 foot shot that's contested because if I make it, uh, it looks like I am the man. Uh, and players that play unselfish that'll make that extra one, two, three passes for a layup. Uh, is really a beautiful thing to watch. It's almost like going to a symphony. Um, most players today, if they have any um, uh, ability or, or any schools that are looking at them or they're a potential college player, they're not going to make that pass. They're really not. And even the players that play in college aren't making that extra pass. Uh, why? Because if I pass it to you, it's going to keep me from getting to the NBA. These guys don't play that way. They play the way that basketball is supposed to be played, which is I've got a good shot. He's got a better shot. He's got a great shot. So let's make that extra two passes and get that great shot. Most players and most teams aren't doing that. Let's talk a little bit more about Drake because you and I have seen him since his freshman year. I'm, more, I'm, I'm in there taking pictures, so I don't have that same perspective that you have having played college ball for Dean Smith. What kind of improvements? Have, because this past year, he's really he's gone to several camps and he's really jumped in the rankings. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's up, like what, top ten now, right? He's yeah. in the last two ones I've seen. He's in top ten. So what's he doing to be able to get up to there? And and I guess what you know, some kids just pay attention to the AAU or the stuff that they don't don't do in high school. I see Drake at a lot of high school sports functions, just supporting the team. He's yeah. he's enjoying being in high school. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that's a testament, one, to his parents. Uh, he's a really, really good kid. Uh, Pete and I were actually able to talk to him a little bit today and uh, just a very, very impressive young man. Uh, so that was uh, neat to see. Um, as far as basketball-wise, uh, he has really taken to uh, instruction. Uh, he's taken to what the coaches have said, hey, you need to work on. 
uh, and he's done that. When I first saw him as a freshman, he had a, an, a, we'll call it an awkward shot. It was really high, didn't have a lot of backspin on it, not a lot of what we would call touch. And he has really worked on that and his shot looks really good. I think that the one thing that I can say that separates Drake from guys that I have seen over the years, and I had a high school teammate that was Mr. Basketball in the state of North Carolina. He was a really good player. He actually reminds me of him because Drake is just as hungry and just as assertive and just as desirous as a defensive player as he is an offensive player. And that is incredibly rare for a high school kid to have that maturity, to have that drive and have that desire to ball out and give what, they, what he's giving on the defensive end of the ball, uh, floor Whereas most of the guys at that level, all they care about is going out and can I get 50 a game? He has the ability to score 60 a game. But again, being an unselfish player, he's playing team basketball and getting his teammates involved and looking for a better shot to the great shot. And most uh, top 10 kids uh, at that level don't do that. And that's what is neat about him. Uh, and that's why I come back to his, co his being coached well and he's got great parents uh, because they have a great kid. Uh, how's he going to add to the UNC team? And this is for all the UNC basketball fans out there. How's he going to add to the team once he comes aboard? Well, uh, being, a, being a, a talented player, uh, he's a wing player. Uh, he's long. He's athletic. And, again, what, what's going to drive his uh, time in Chapel Hill is how he does on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, he can play uh, ACC basketball uh, right now as a defensive player. Uh, that is not going to be a question at all. He's long, he's quick, uh, he's fast, uh, he's got great instincts, uh, and he's willing to do the things on that end of the floor that most kids <clears throat> aren't willing to do. So that's going to allow him to stand out both in the college <coughs> game. And as you said, I think I think he's 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 got the talents and, and the drive to, to make it further past college. I do think that he'll make it past, uh, past college. Uh, it will be uh, driven and determined by how well he shoots. Uh, he's shooting the ball really well here. It is a different animal shooting in uh, 15 and 20,000 seat uh, arenas uh, versus a high school gym. But from what we've seen and how he's done in the AAU circuit and playing in some very, very uh, prestigious events against top-notch competition, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't had a problem at all. So I think he's going to acclimate very, very well to Chapel Hill. And I know the coaches and um, those teammates he's going to have over there are excited about having him. We're excited as former players about having guys like Drake Powell come to Chapel Hill. So he's going to become part of the UNC family. Uh, he's already part of the family. He's already he's, part of the he's family. He's signed up. He's, on the he's in the family now. All right, let's finish up with one last question, uh, and this has to do with you. What were one or two things during your career at UNC that put the biggest smiles on your face? Well, I'll tell you the first one was when I uh, came out of the tunnel for my first game uh, with the uniform on and hearing the band play and the fans in the stands. Uh, I was unique in that I was from a small town in North Carolina, and ever since I was three years old, I told my grandmother that I was going to go play basketball for Dean Smith at, uh, at North Carolina. So while most of my teammates became Carolina fans, I was a Carolina fan uh, as a little kid. So I got to live out a childhood dream, uh, which was incredible. So that first time I came out of the gym, uh, I don't know, my feet were touching the floor and I'm guessing my head was hitting the, the dome roof because I was so excited and, uh, and jacked up. Uh, so that was amazing. Uh, I'd say the second one was being a part of some great, great teams and playing with great players. And Coach Smith was everything that you have ever heard about. He was a great man. He cared about us and what we were doing beyond basketball. Um, as far as, you know, games and accolades, you know, we won – two regular season ACC uh, championships. And then the big one was in, for us was in 1989. We won the ACC tournament, uh, beating our rivals from Durham uh, in, a, in an epic game uh, with Danny Ferry and Christian Leighton and those guys. So uh, had some great moments, great teams, great players, but uh, it was an honor uh, to have had the opportunity to wear that jersey. Actually, I do have one last question, even though I told you I was gonna have a last question. I've been shooting sports for over 20 years, and I feel, and I, I want to get your opinion on this, that kids that participate in extracurricular activities in school, 
sports or otherwise, have a tendency to do better in school and in life. You hear about the bad ones, mm -hmm. but you don't always hear about the good ones, which I think outnumber yeah. the bad yeah. the bad stories. What's your feeling about that? I have two components that I would talk about. One, uh, I always did, and I think my teammates, we always did better academically when we were in season because it allowed us to be more structured, more disciplined, more aware of what was going on. When we had idle time, we didn't do as well because we were kind of floating. So when we were in season, uh, we had the structure and discipline, uh, we did better. Uh, the second thing I would say about kids is that uh, don't get locked into one sport. Uh, play as many as you can. Uh, that will allow you to be more versatile and it will actually enhance the development of the sport that you eventually go on to play. I hear and see mostly parents, but some kids that I wanna lock in on this sport at you know, in seventh grade, uh, don't do that. You know, let the kid enjoy their time with their classmates, with their teammates, and they will find what level that they want to participate in. Uh, but it is really a shame uh, that these kids start locking into one sport in, you know, in fifth grade. Don't do it. Let them play all the sports. The reason that you play sports is for the enjoyment of that particular sport for the competition, for the camaraderie, for being around teammates. You learn so many other things about life. Going to college is a bonus. Uh, getting a scholarship is a bonus. But I played basketball and baseball and, and golf and football because I enjoyed those sports and enjoyed those teams and teammates. I didn't play those sports so that I could get a scholarship to go play basketball at the University of North Carolina. Now, I wanted it, but that's not why I played keep that in mind as, as parents. Well, it's interesting you say that because Drake May, after that game where he did that basketball pass, mentioned the fact in his press post-game press conference that kids should play multiple sports, and you just re reaffirmed that belief. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, thanks, Jeff, for telling us about the basketball environment here in Chatham County, but because of that, you get to say, again, Generator Super Center, how do I reach out to you? That number again is? Generator Super Center, 919-925-3434 and Generator Supercenter of the Triangle.com. There you go. Thank you, Jeff.